What interesting and energizing days these have been. My thanks go out to the organizers of our first virtual Wonka World Conference. A big job, well done. At this closing session, I'm grateful for the opportunity to share my vision for our global network. This photo is from my home turf, with ski tracks leading on to the far horizon. Quo Vadis Wonka. At the awards ceremony yesterday, we presented the new executive board of Wonka, a great team. We will be sharing the responsibility for running our organization during this next biennium. Where do we find ourselves now and how will the current global situation influence the plans for our work? That's Dr. Richard Norton, Lancet renowned editor-in-chief and expert in global health. He sums it up quite well. Strong primary care is an absolute prerequisite to defend us against this pandemic and future pandemics. It is the first line of defense. I hear that as a call to us, to Wonka. The ongoing pandemic affords us a golden moment to make the case for primary care and family medicine. Health for all is our vision and here is how I see our mission. Now, more than ever, what the world needs is high quality primary care, a close to home healthcare hub that functions in seamless collaboration with social care and public health services, as well as with hospitals. That requires a strong multi-professional team with a qualified family doctor on board. When I stood for election as president in 2018, I emphasized three essential goals. Build identity, increase visibility, exert influence. It's time now to explore the concrete actions Wonka can take to help achieve those goals. Here's my plan. Building identity. This means building our organization. So much is built and there's still so much potential. We need to examine our structure as well as our content. First, structure. In a diverse and complex organization such as ours, it's easy to lose the overview of who we are. Many Wonka members are not even aware that they are Wonka members. Many of those who are aware are not familiar with the organization's structure. We are the more than 500,000 members of 132 member organizations in 110 countries, grouped into seven regions. There are some 34 members in the academic membership group, which consists of academic departments of family medicine and 10 organizations in collaborative relations. The majority of our members arrive via their national colleges, but over 800 individual general practitioners and family physicians have chosen to join Wonka in their own right by direct membership. The regions all have their own councils. All the regional presidents are re represented on the World Executive Board, along with three members at large and the young doctor representative, the president-elect and the president. The professional content is developed in working parties and special interest groups and is shared with members. This supports their professional development locally. It also prepares them to give informed input to the leadership when policies, priorities and political direction are being decided. The pandemic has functioned as a magnifying glass. Long existing geopolitical inequities, as well as inequities within health and social care, have become far more visible. Disparities based on gender, age, ethnicity, economics, language, culture and geography are being played out in plain sight. 
how can we make sure that these same patterns of inequity are not reinforced by our organization or actually woven subtly into its very structure? If there are to be helpful and constructive dialogues about equity must be balanced. Awareness of possible inequities does help enrich our exchanges about organizational development, but we have to be careful not to put too much of our focus on our differences. Polarization never furthers the aim of a collective effort. As we build our Wonka organization, we should be aware of something that is triggered in people as the complexity of their human-made systems increases. Almost instinctively, they begin to design and build their own turf, often elaborately complex parallel systems, as if that could help them tackle new challenges, and even some of the old ones. We we'll need to recognize that tendency if and when it crops up, and be prepared how best to respond to it. Now to content. Content and what we share. For the last 25 years, a key commitment of mine has been and still is to recognize and affirm our core values and to fully grasp the dimensions of our specialty. A strong sense of identity requires us to know both who we are and what we share, what unites us. Our values are our guiding principles. At the same time, practices and standards vary in different contexts, particularly when it comes to local needs and what the public demands. We can recognize our differences better when we're aware of our common ground and be better prepared to meet the challenges we face as societal trends change. Shifts in societal trends are always reflected in the health systems and first and foremost in primary care. Knowledge of our common ground also enables our collective efforts to be effective such as when we develop training programs, define research agendas, agree on advocacy actions, plan activities that are well dimensioned. I've had the privilege of being actively engaged in phase after phase of brainstorming and consensus processes focused on our core values and the nature of our specialty, on the Norwegian, Nordic and recently on the European level. By three posters, this slide describes one such integrated brainstorming process that has gone on for the last 20 years in my own Nordic region. We are about to finalize a regional brainstorming process in Europe as we speak. Its outcome, a consensus-based statement. Similar things have been done elsewhere. Here, the Canadian version. And take a look at this paper, describing how core values have been included in a family medicine training program in Sudan. The authors describe in positive, its positive impact in detail. So, massive efforts have been invested in Wonka during its nearly half-century long life. I'm looking forward during the next two years to participating in far-reaching exchanges about our core values and the definition of family medicine. For a definition to impact identity, members need to have a stake in it. That sense of ownership that comes from having won it for themselves. Let's consider how to improve the dialogues between the parts of our community. Vertically, between the global, regional and local level. Then horizontally, with and among working parties and special interest groups. I'm especially looking forward to including young doctors in these dialogues. But remember, 
Understanding our field is not something we do once and then we've got it. It's an ongoing process, life long. Now over to visibility. If we want to set the agenda, we must be visible. To that end, we will work to strengthen the brand Wonka. Success at branding, according to marketing research, depends on sending out consistent visual and verbal messages. Our members are our primary source of visibility. A sense of shared ownership of the definition of our specialty throughout networks enables them to present Wonka with clarity. It empowers each and every one of us to help shape the agenda for small and large-scale policy dialogues in all of our varied contexts. Our messaging, then, is consistent and recognizable. During the last 18 months, we've seen somewhat positive, although paradoxical, consequence of the pandemic for our branding. We've been sort of forced to enter the digital world and also been lucky enough to have access to it. Now that we've almost figured out how to operate these remarkable virtual tools, we can use them to make our dialogues more inclusive, increase participation in ongoing pro processes, and become more visible to each other and to the outer world, wherever on the globe we find ourselves. The vast Family Medicine Research Base is another rich resource for our messaging. Research results and evidence help us understand and explain the hows and whys of family medicine's impact on health outcomes. The time has come to conduct a global analysis of primary care and family medicine during the pandemic. At the initiative of the Working Party on Research, we've begun to outline a joint research venture. Among the interesting questions to explore are what pivotal factors were operating in countries where a primary care-based health system managed to tackle the pandemic well? And what might account for that not being the case in countries where that didn't succeed? Another aspect which should be included in a global analysis is to develop a systematic approach to collect data on the impact of the pandemic in terms of deaths of primary care providers. A WHO report on deaths on healthcare workers issued last September doesn't explicitly compare primary care with other settings, but the assumptions underpinning their estimates and recommendations would support a theory that many of the deaths have been in primary care settings, especially in low- and middle-income countries. The current data are inadequate for us to really understand the magnitude of the problem, which is likely to be substantially more than has been reported. Datasets from individual countries would provide a basis for further exploration, Wonka has the infrastructure to help us collect such data. So Wonka research projects increase our visibility. Wonka's training and practice accreditation programs are under rapid development. Our education and quality improvement activities serve our communities. They also highlight the legitimacy of our professional voice, particularly when educational plans are made and standards for quality are set. That, in turn, helps increase Wonka's visibility and, potentially, our influence. Obviously, for Wonka to function, we need funding. Membership dues are one of our main sources of income. So are conference fees, but those have nearly dried up now due to lockdowns and the lack of available meeting places. There's so much we want to do, so we must look for supplementary sources of income. 
to attract funding and receive grants, we must increase our visibility. And we need our infrastructure. The Wonka Executive Board now has the possibility of sharing messages, materials and instruments with regions via the regional presidents and with working parties and special interest groups via the chairs. Wonka also added a full-time communications officer to its secretariat. She has already provided us with materials we can use, such as the Wonka map slides I showed you at the start. This year's Family Doctor Day was a big success. It showcased how a centrally designed communication strategy can function when utilized in local campaigns. In short, increased visibility through branding Wonka. And there is more to come. Visibility is necessary for us to exert influence. And exerting influence allows us to increase our impact. Here, advocacy is the tool. What elements of advocacy help heighten our impact? First, we must build trust. Far too often, people accuse medical doctors of, of um, exploiting the professional advice we give as a shield to hide behind while we're grabbing at higher status, more privileged working conditions, and of course, more money. Through Wonka, meanwhile, it becomes clear what we aim for is professional development, providing evidence based on experience and advice based on best practice. Committed to achieving the best outcomes for our patients. The better we recognize and develop that way of understanding our role, the more we can refine our professional voice. That's how we gain trust. And that is how we safeguard the legitimacy of our advice. The prices charged for our services are negotiable. Our values and professional standards are not. Second, we need allies. Our most important ally is the public, our patients. Our patients are voters, the ones who elect and re-elect our politicians. The importance of what primary caregivers provide is less visible to individual patients than is the work of specialists, our secondary care colleagues. What impacts health outcomes, however, is not which specific technical procedure is performed, rather it is what family medicine provides, the continuity of care over time. This is how I explained it in a TEDx talk in, in 2019. And here is how my Nordic colleagues and I explained it in a film we made a few weeks ago. General practice, family medicine, is a medical specialty with a defined curriculum and its own research tradition. It is based on a set of values and a specific approach to problems. Our core values and principles are presented in the following. Remember also that continuity of care requires continuity of available healthy healthcare professionals. We are obligated to take good care of ourselves, physically and emotionally, and to seek help when we need it. Doctors are people. Other primary care professionals, as well as our colleagues in secondary care, are also important allies. It's essential that we nurture our relationships to them and to their professional organizations. We need each other. We must work tirelessly to cultivate common ground with all our colleagues within the entire healthcare system. Third, words matter. 
We need to develop policy languages or maybe dialects that speak directly to our listeners. We must train ourselves and each other to translate evidence and experience into terms that are widely accessible, while also being tailored to suit specific contexts. Case in point. I had the opportunity during the, this last year to serve on the WHO Europe's Pandemic Commission, which focused on rethinking policy priorities. In a group filled with finance experts and former leaders and heads of state, I was the only practicing healthcare worker. I saw more clearly than ever that it's crucial for us, family doctors, to be able to spell out our concepts and ideas. We must have convincing lines of argument, thought through and ready, so that we can reach out beyond the narrow field of healthcare. This should include how to talk about money. Which leads me to my fourth point. We must identify and reach out to our target groups. During the last de decade, Wonka's leaders have forged strong relationships with the representatives of WHO at the regional as well as global level and will continue to maintain and develop them. We'll also tend our relationships to our other important external stakeholders, such as the OECD, yet another voice in the global health policy dialogue. Which brings me to a request I'd like to make of you. Early next year, the OECD will launch the biggest survey ever on the role of primary caregivers play in chronic care management. Both care providers and recipients are asked to take part. I urge you to take the time to respond to that survey. A high response level will provide us with invaluable data to use in crafting policy dialogues in the years to come. I also want us to broaden our scope, going beyond our stakeholders. If we're to have real impact on health policies, we'll need to engage in dialogues with people from other sectors, such as finance and education. WHO and OECD are examples of top-heavy global institutions. My picture of Wonka is different. It's at the community level that our advocacy can have the greatest impact. That's where we live and work. That's where our, our people seek and receive the services they need. That's where we train our future colleagues and other primary care professionals. I'm convinced that's where we can increase our impact most. If, that is, we show people who we are and what we stand for if we can be visible and speak with clarity, becoming role models for communicating about evidence and experience in ways that speak directly to the people of local context. That's the challenge and we are rising to meet it. A tweet came a few days ago that summed up the essence of advocacy. Proposing the action points is absolutely essential. In other words, don't just know what you want, but also figure out how to make it happen. Then do it. Here are some examples. To bridge the gap between health and social care, build primary care teams. To integrate primary care and public health, run co-trainings for the personnel. Train in primary care settings. If the long-term aim is for 50% of the health workforce to be trained in and for primary care, commit to having 30% by 2030. Make sure that there are budget items earmarked specifically for primary care. And not least, family medicine on the undergraduate curricula at all medical schools. In closing, let me repeat our common goal. High quality primary care, a close to home healthcare hub that functions in seamless collaboration 
with social care and public health services, as well as with hospitals. That requires a strong, multi-professional team with a qualified family doctor on board. I think this message can be used as a headline for all of us when we are building our identity, increasing our visibility in order to exert influence. The message can be elaborated on and adjusted to the different contexts we as family doctors are operating in. There we are. Those are the main elements of my plan for how we, together as Wonka, can contribute to making that vision a reality. Thank you for listening. I'm looking forward to following our path together, all of us. I hope I can see as many of you as possible, preferably on your own home turf. If travel circumstances allow, I will certainly come if you invite me. Hasta pronto todos, nos vemos. See you soon, in person, hopefully.